Hello, it's me again, the buyer, and welcome to our second episode of the Might Motors campaign playthrough, where we try to build the most luxurious and best cars in the world. I have here now uh, our car from the first episode, the Might Mark 1, launched in BMNG Drive, and yeah, it's time to get to work, drive to work, see how it drives, and see what we can improve with our next generation car. I have also not the first version, I have the facelift version with the automatic gearbox, so very nice and smooth driving here. We have our mighty V12 7.5 liters um, revving all the way up to 3.5k, um, but yeah, we'll never use that of course, we are just cruising along. Um, the car itself has a very sleek looking design. Maybe not very American, not very Gasmian. Um, I try to go for a bit of a mix here between American and uh, European style. So also went for a quite aerodynamic look. Um, I hope you all like it. And if not, please let me know what I can improve. Maybe quick look a bit close to the design. So I try to keep the grill design for the future for yeah just keeping somewhat of a brand identity also the hood ornament just a aerodynamic blob um, on there um, i have these kind of ridges on on the hood and also on the trunk to yeah reduce vibrations and therefore noise inside the vehicle um, and i also painstakingly created this nice chrome line all around the car um, with many many individual bumper bar fixtures, fixtures, so yeah, it was quite quite a lot of work, but I like the outcome. Also, re really like the bump of the hood here, so yeah, I'm quite quite pleased with this design. Um, yeah, um, we have seen also in the past uh, in the playthrough that we already had some quality issues, so there is already some fun going on that yeah the might in might motors does not stand for a very mighty car but rather for the fact that the car only might work um, we try to change that in the future i don't know if we have the money already to do so um, maybe we also want to improve the handling of our cars in the future so this one is very as you would expect um, very heavy um, doesn't like to corner at all but yeah it feels realistic for a luxury car of the time um, the power is just a little bit too much for the weight um, so you can get it to spin the wheels um, which is also quite nice but it's also quite controllable for a rear wheel, rear wheel drive car here um, so as an automation export in bmg um, very very happy with that yeah, so the car only might work, we have quality problems um, and I also recognize this um, when you take a look at um, at our uh, side mirrors that they tend to wobble a bit um, so we have to fix our side mirrors for the future, of course. Yeah, as I'm quite pleased, feels like a proper lux luxury car also when driving it, also doesn't necessarily lock up the brakes too much um, and I think we are pretty close to our factory here um, and yeah it's time to get to work and here we are back in our office um, things are looking good we have 8 million in the bank 11 million company valuation and it's 1954 so it's definitely time for a new car. We should probably should have started a little bit earlier. Um, our last facelift is already four years old in its design. So we should really try to get a new car out as soon as possible. And also maybe try to scale up our production. So let's get right into designing Mark II. Again, we have a luxury focus for the sedan car. This will be our main car. Um, and yeah, I took quite a lot of time to try and see which kind of car body I want to take. Um, 
which fits the brand. Um, these are all a bit too American style for my taste. So I might use an older body. Also this one is quite old from automation perspective and not too nice. Um, I rather prefer something from 1947. And this is this one, three meter wheelbase. Um, and I think I can make it look like a mite. The problem is uh, this is quite old. That means it will get a, an old body penalty. So usually you always try to get the newest bodies so that um, the customers like your new fancy cars. Um, in this case, I just don't want to do it. And I hope that the body age penalty is not as large as that it would hinder me further down the road. We'll see. So here we have our default setup, also where we have the most of familiarity. Um, the only thing we can do in a tiny factory, the only thing we can maybe do, do when we go to a small factory. Um, so no steel material, as we don't have monocoque and not a medium sized factory yet. Um, and with that, I would work on a facelift of our old engine family. For the engine I don't want to change all that much, I guess um, maybe go for a bit better headers to increase the power output, so we definitely shouldn't lose performance compared to the old one or stay at the same level, we definitely want to increase a bit as more top speed will also give us more prestige and also more power. And I also go for the reverse flow headers of course. So that's quite a nice gain, 20% more power, I think it's quite reasonable. And I imported design again, so this is what it will look like. Um, from the front, quite European I would say, um, on the side and on the rear, a little bo bit more on the American side with the big chrome bumper. Don't know if it's too much of two separate cars, but and also with the tail fins here. Um, but yeah, I'm also quite happy with it. Maybe not as happy as with the first one, um, but still, I think it's quite detailed and and nice. And yeah, again, for the first thing, I just choose the common um, options and then optimize in the second run. All right, now the car is standing properly on its wheels and yeah, that's basically it. I also went for a basic interior design again, although it's not too detailed, so don't look too closely. Yep, and that's basically it. So let's try to tune it. First iteration already is quite nice. A bit more gears. See here we have a little bit of wheel spin. Well, I also want to have some drivability, so acceleration means a bit of drivability and don't want it to be too slow. 13 seconds from 0 to 100 seems about right. Wheels, let me check. Yeah, medium compound is a little bit more comfortable, so I go with this one. Brakes, we still need to tune those. And also, of course, more comfortable brake pad. I cannot break to get the brake force, but it's not too much of an issue. Um, so just want to make sure that the car doesn't lock up with the rears in beam and G. So if this should be okay. Um, get a little bit of fade. Yeah, this is a luxury car. It's okay. Again, I don't care about cooling and aerodynamics yet. 
I already have one quality point here. I can see if I want to increase it a little bit further. But you see already this one click gives a lot of higher material costs. Um, so I probably stay with that. Yeah, very expensive. So that means we just need to do more, more research in this area. And here, um, again, recirculating ball, killing all the sportiness and um, advanced 50 safety. So I want to stay on top of things. Um, and the car is quite nice balanced, so I don't need to mess with midway distribution here a lot. Good, so let's see what the competition is doing. I'm um, less drivable, yeah, quite heavy car, it's okay. Um, yeah, no sportiness, that's okay. Um, wow, nice. 20% um, more comfort and massive, massive prestige. So, yeah, I think we will do quite well. We're also better in safety. And have a very smooth engine. Excellent. So, yeah, quick build. Looks good. Maybe adjust the price a bit more. 20 sales for 35. Uh, yeah, not for 35 dollars. 35k. 40. Yeah. Let's see. It also depends a bit on our manufacturing capac capacity we'll, we will have in the end. No, again, not 40 dollars. 40k. Okay. All right. First car done. Let's get on with the convertible. All right, yeah, that's basically it, except that we have an issue with our mirrors again. That's not acceptable. Excellent. And we have here the rear deck. All right. This will be a luxury convertible, looking excellent already. Don't change too much as this will shoot up your engineering time. So I will just leave it as it is. And as a little specialty, as I would like to turn up the um, production and maybe move into a small factory if I can afford it, um, I will also build a coupe version for the Grand Tour. And this will focus on GT Premium, or maybe even GT. What's the budget? Uh, I think we need to go for GT, as there are no ma not many GT Premiums yet. What I also like to do is um, take the hoist down so that the preview pictures are done when the car is standing on the ground. So this will then also show up in the dashboard. Just make sure that I turn all the hoists down. All right, now the difficult part, engineering time. We need to get this thing out soon. And with soon, I would like to have two years, but that's impossible. Basically, I, I took at the time and took a look at the time here. So I rather maybe I can get it down to four years. Let's see. And also the cost is something we need to reduce. So again, reliability will have to suffer for this one. Okay, that's already looking better here, but not yet here. So I probably won't be able to optimize the tooling and process and this can influence your profit margin quite a bit. So we have to optimize those in a facelift um, and get the first version out with a bit smaller profit margin. Okay, 
so 8.2 million it would be for 48 months i guess i have to go with that in the future i need to focus on learning a bit more but for this car i'm just too late to start it the engine is looking better as it's just a facelift so here i can maybe even go into reliability nice but I also want to save cost as far as I can. So that's it. 3.6 for the engine. Also very expensive. I will stick with the contract of course because factories are just too expensive for me now. 9.5k for this. So here now let's see how much a small factory costs and then um, this would be our workshop in the future maybe for maybe when we look move into luxury premium in the end so this would be the hand building workshop um, but for now let's just build a small factory also, I will just build it on a small plot, not being able to upgrade in the future. Maybe at some point we want to go medium. But yeah, if I have to buy a new plot, I will just lose a little bit. So I'm fine with that. Small one, of course, for the start. And the question is, can I get leather works or not? 10 million. Would love to have it. So leather works basically improves the production efficiency of um, handmade interior so it removes the hand building flag and makes them just into limited production so in the long term definitely a good idea to do so we see it here in the production efficiency i have three trims here in a small factory you can always somehow say in a tiny factory two trims in a small factory three trims in a medium factory four trims something like that and I can just check what's the difference when I deselect the leather works. And then it's just 3% in the production cost. Let's take a look at um, the production cost 17.4k. And if I add the le leather works, it's 17.3. So, no, I'm not taking it for this one yet. I think the production numbers are too low to justify it. And we need to keep the cost down, of course. So just some basic settings here. Um, yeah, worker quality and wages, of course, can be something to reduce cost. Want to save a bit of money at least. And still, Gasmia has so many people and they all want to work for me. And they have good people. Excellent. Yeah, that's a good setup, I guess. Still, we will have quality issues, probably. And then tooling. Yeah, this is now, of course, more expensive than it was earlier. But still reasonably possible. I think it's a worthwhile investment to bump up quality. We have a lot of tooling. More automation is less quality. And it's only a minor thing for our profit margins. So let's see. Looking good, but the prices could be adjusted a bit. So the GT is obviously getting us the least money. Um, I hope it doesn't eat into the luxury cost uh, market too much okay now I'm really much down here but yeah I'll just start like this I will do more marketing to to pump up our awareness and hopefully then the factory utilization but let's first see if I can actually afford it of course it's all aligned the staffing is not an issue as the factory takes ages to build so I could even 
make them better or just hire better workers I can go for 100% I guess because I only need one shift in the beginning and now let's talk about money okay I can get all the loan that I need that's good yeah, 5 million just for interest is maybe a bit much. I reduce my interest rate a bit by taking less. The project is reasonably cheap. I also have almost half of it in the... No, not half of it in the bank. Just 8 million in the bank. So let's go with 75% and increase our payback time so that the rates are reasonable. Let's say 300k. 77 months save and I think this is looking quite well now I'm just thinking if I should increase my profit margin on the car and spend more money because I can get so much money from the bank right now but I rather play it a bit more safe okay so let's see how it goes the car uh, the mark one is still selling quite nicely um, let's give it one tick and see how much money we have and then maybe we do more R&D and marketing. So this is looking excellent. And we still have stock. And our, oh, we, selling, we are selling quite nicely now. Okay, um, let's check R&D. We have still quite a bit of money and I would like to spend or what do I want to get automatic three gears is something nice solid discs of course is nice so the next car I will probably start in the 60s because then we also have advanced safety and I cannot research all of that myself so maybe I just increase also a bit on the body and chassis side get better suspension get one more on interior or is that too much I'll just try it and then we're good here right, let's do less interior and rather focus on market and marketing pretty low cost as of now I would like to go into prestige this should be a, a big boost that's worth it and then let's see we are still making a healthy profit but I still also want to save a bit of money because we will spend some money while um, the factory is being produced so um, let's let's do it like this also I am not allowed to forget about cancelling production of the mark 1 once the new factory is running because um, it won't get any engines anymore. So let's take a look at our, our sales as of now. We're in luxury, convertible luxury and are already selling in G GT Premium so that will even be better in the future when we get our GT car. But we are already running out of stock and I need to bump up my production. So why do I want to get rid of my pre-orders? Um, you see here that the delay desirability penalty, I get 13% less sales because people have to wait for their car for one or two months. So they need a fancy car very urgently and that's why I need to produce more. Yeah, we have reduced the penalty to 6.6% already and it will further go down as we are currently building more cars than we can sell per month. I'm super happy that um, the Mark 1 is holding up so nicely. Um, yeah, still very good desirability in luxury, in GT Premium and convertible luxury. So this will keep us afloat until um, over the next two years. 
I think I can spend a little bit in R&D now. Our research share have, has gone up to more than 25%, so I think that's the upper limit we should go for. We don't want to waste too much money on, on research if it's not necessary. Also, I need to keep an eye on my stock so that we don't have too much stock once, once the new car is ready. We have too many convertibles as of now and the other ones are selling already or being pre-ordered. And now factory construction is kicking in. And we are losing a bit of money, but that's not a problem. I pause the convertible. I think I have enough. And I can pause the sedan. Economy is looking excellent for the launch of the new car, which has just completed engineering. Excellent. And we are almost rid of the old car and we are selling like crazy. Let's wait one more tick to see about production, if we need to increase it. So we're mostly building convertibles as of now, um, because they have the largest project profit margin, but this will change in the next month. And we're making a huge profit, so excellent. But still, of course, some of the old cars are going into this, so this will change. Um, but as I said, I want to get a facelift out of this new one as soon as possible. I don't think we have massive overproduction, so I don't need to upgrade the factory um, right now. We are at 1.5 shifts, that's good. So just a quick facelift to make it a bit more efficient. And then, um, yeah, then wait till 1960, where we will design a new car. Oh, nice, we have radial tires now. We definitely should fit them to all of the cars that we have. Of course, now with more grip, we also have um, more, more, more problems reaching the grip limits <laughs> while braking. Uh, brakes are just too weak, but yeah, still braking this. Oh, braking distance is not good. Um, uh, is it worth to sacrifice 0.2 comfort for one meter, one and a half meters? No. If actually, maybe it would. In real life, you would do it, of course, to save a few more lives, but this is not real life. Monograph should have gotten a lot cheaper already. Yeah, but still, increasing the quality here is just eating into our margin. Hydraulic ball steering, more comfort. So that's the direct comparison. Hundred forty-nine. Yeah, it's it's definitely better, but is it worth it? I think that's the change is too much for this generation of car. This is something for the next one. And yeah, we also need some unique selling point, of course, for the next generation. But maybe um, the progressive springs. This is definitely something I want to fit here. So summary, progressive springs and radial tires. I guess I'll do that also for the other two cars. Also fix the bottoming out here for the um, convertible. Yeah, I wanted to get the Grand Touring version a bit more sporty, but this, the steering and everything is so bad and the automatic gearbox that it's not worth it because we can't get above zero sportiness. We already get a penalty for low sportiness, so definitely something to take a look at. Body age penalty already 4.6%, here it goes, so definitely necessary. This will be a short version of the car and we need to get something new out after this. 
in 1960. And now the main reason, making this one more efficient. And getting process up is, is quite cheap. Yeah, 18 months I think is, is reasonable. Engine can stay the same. Yeah, this is looking really nice, but I also don't want to discount the prices too much. We are a premium company and this should show in the prices. Oh, the margins are looking juicy. Yeah, this obviously <laughs> um, decreased um, the factory utilization a lot. Yeah, let's do it like this. Same prices as before. And this time for 3.4 million I don't need any loan. Oh, 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 I need to fix this. Um, the people are still pre-ordering the old car because it's not completely out of production yet because it's still sitting in the old workshop. Probably also, yeah, still pay something for the post um, factory stuff. Um, probably have to create an empty factory co configuration for for the workshop. So just design the factory, not not building a new thing here. Cost me 450k, and that's fine. No loan. Sign it off. Yeah, um, I experienced that before when I create an empty factory configuration, I get some kind of error. So, what I'll do now, I just save and the game exit it, go back in, and then it's, it's away. Here we are again, and now it shouldn't complain anymore. Yeah, perfect. We have no more factory stuff that's just sitting around, so we fired them all and th also the car is no longer clogging up um, this view here. So now we just have to get, um, yeah, we really have to get our stock up because we ha have seven months of retooling going on. Yeah, we need to ramp up the production. Minimum shifts too. 0.5 yeah we need to do this quickly yeah of course we don't have the stuff for that <laughs> um, yeah so we might run out of cars and or money just to be sure I pause the production ah I ran into this stupid bug factory shutdown for retooling here and here it's not doing anything um, so I, I'm, I'm sure it would have been further produced so I don't know what it should have been if the, this one should be longer or this one should be shorter um, yeah ran into this problem again but we are recouping all of the money that we have invested into our stock just we have a little bit too many cars now and we have right higher refresh cost. Again, here the values are different. 63k, 2.260k, uh, but I'll pay that. And now it's actually starting. And we have way too many old cars. Yeah, but they will hopefully help to decrease our pre-orders a bit. Yeah, now profits are looking proper. Factory is running at 1.5. And then we're almost in 1960. Damn, this factory is now really, really efficient in the car. So this facelift was so worth it. And one more month. And the taxman will be happy. Yes, oh god. 4.5 million out of the window. Um, yeah, but that's the end of this episode um super happy 
with how it's going we might be able to expand um i'm just not sure about in, into which direction i'm going so i'm now already in the grand touring direction it's too early for some sports utility premium stuff so maybe you have an idea where we should go if you have any idea please leave a comment um, also please comment on which car is your favorite mark one mark two um, which kind of the game you would like to understand more and better maybe i can focus on that and then i hope to see you all again next time thank you for watching and bye bye